Hello, welcome to this technical overview of Creo Illustrate, our 3D technical illustration solution. My name is James Brooks, I work for Root Solutions, and I'll be taking you through this demonstration today. Creo Illustrate offers a dedicated environment with the tools required to create rich 2D and 3D technical illustrations. These can be used to communicate complex products and procedures clearly and graphically to downstream consumers of service and technical information. This enables the technical illustrators, authors and service planners to repurpose design and engineering data from any 3D CAD format. And this can be used with service information, training materials, illustrated parts catalogues and even interactive sales collateral. Creo Illustrate allows the illustrator to interact with the design data and its BOM structure from an existing engineering design. This interaction is associative and stays intact through the whole of the illustration's life cycle so that as engineering design changes or service procedure updates occur, these changes propagate through Creo Illustrate to all of the illustrations and all of the figures, keeping them up to date. One of the key elements of Creo Illustrate, though, is its ability to create multiple figures from a single data design set, and the ability then to export this as either 2D or 3D information, which will include things like vectored line art, as well as the rastered graphical image, along with things like hotspots and extra information. Let's take a look at Creo Illustrate. We begin in Creo Illustrate by importing some engineering CAD data, and this can be in any format, STEP, IGES, or native design data from Creo, NX, SolidWorks, or any of the major CAD vendors. Once the information is imported, the Illustrator has a highly detailed model in the Creo Illustrate environment, and this allows them to manipulate the orientation and position of this assembly, together with full access to all the assembly's constituent parts and sub-assemblies. The illustrator can then begin to select and reposition the parts safe in the knowledge that whatever they do in this environment won't affect the original engineering data. Translations and rotations can be achieved by using the interactive six-axis controller and either enter in specific angles and distances when required. And should it be needed, we can always restore the items back to their original position. When it comes to the orientation of the objects, predefined orientations can be applied, such as front, right, top, etc. And should you require specific orientations, such as diametric or trimetric or any custom orientation, you can go into the Customize View option and create and store your own personal views. The system can be configured so that these views are always present, meaning that you don't have to create them every single time you go into a brand new illustration. Creo Illustrate has the ability to present its information in a variety of graphical styles. By entering the Figure tab and the Render Mode option, we can select from a number of graphical styles. These range from shaded to shaded with edges, and those edges are actually uh, an intelligent hidden line effect that also has thick and thin line styling. We can have flat shaded with edges, cell illustration, to a more traditional black and white pen style, again showing off that intelligent thick and thin line processing. You can also select and configure your own page size formats, allowing you to create the illustration with the size of the deliverable in mind. Now, for my first figure, I'll be applying a white shaded with edges style. And now that we've looked at the orientation and the, this page size, I'll need to take a look at the bill of materials for this data. And that's what we're going to focus on next. Because we've used the engineering data directly, the current bomb is exactly as the design engineers created it which is great for engineering, but not quite so good for technical publications. Illustrators may be presenting a variety of structures to this data and trying to tailor the way that the bomb is structured to the illustration they're hoping to create. Now that might be for a service bomb or a training guide or a procedure. They'll have to change the format of the bomb to accurately represent its intended usage. And in Creo Illustrate, we can seamlessly repurpose this bomb structure. Again, this repurposing will not affect the original engineering data. It's purely for the illustrator within the confines of Creo Illustrate. So we can see the original engineering bomb or the E-bomb on the right hand side, and we can see our new S-bomb on the left. And the illustrator simply builds the new hierarchy by inserting new nodes, or if needed, combining components, creating kits, or renaming objects to accurately create the bomb that they need. Bombs can be also uh, imported or exported to aid in this task.
Users can then either select objects from the parts list or they can select them graphically from the 3D display and with a simple drag and drop, place them into the correct location in their SBOM. So I'm going to take a couple of moments here to select all the objects that I'd like to repurpose from that engineering bomb into the, the top shell assembly that I've created in the SBOM. You can see by selecting the, the small icon next to those uh, assembly names, you can hide the display so I can see what I've already allocated uh, and what I haven't. And I'm then going to start picking up objects that I'd like to put inside the interior, the front axle assembly, the rear axle assembly, and slowly work my way through until all of those objects have been consumed and allocated into the SBOM. Skipping ahead, we can now see all of the parts and assemblies have been repurposed from the E-BOM to the S-BOM. And this is going to help me with some downstream activities such as applying callouts or creating interactive parts lists. But it's also going to help me with more immediate activities when creating this first figure or illustration. So we can see how all of these objects are in their individual sub-assemblies that I've created. And when we go back to the actual Creo Illustrate, we can see how those assemblies are comprised and all of the individual components shown within that new S-BOM. So for this particular figure, what I'm going to do is apply some special rendering techniques to some of these objects. So for the top shell and also the interior, I'd like to apply a, a phantom effect. And this phantom effect gives it a kind of uh, transparent appearance. Um, but unlike ordinary transparency, we don't see any of the, the back edges or the back lines. We only get given the ones which are, which are closest to the camera. So you can see how I've I've made that interior transparent, but rather than seeing all of the edges for the interior, we're simply seeing the ones that are on the outside of those components. And it gives us a very nice effect when we want to see what's happening inside of assemblies within an illustration without actually complicating or, or making the view too busy. So now I'll go back to using some of those translation tools and we're going to start pulling the tire and the hub assembly away with the brake disc uh, and just pull those to, a, to a, a nice view, get the orientation so it's a good composition on screen and then start applying some finer detail, perhaps uh, some things like um, uh, center lines and then a few call outs on there as well. But you can see with that phantom effect there that we can see the motor, we can see the internal workings of that axle assembly um, without overcomplicating the view. And this phantom effect is unique to Creo Illustrate. Uh, it does provide a very powerful method of, of showing off your illustrations and your components. So now applying some callouts, we can see that there, there's a wide variety of callouts to choose from, first and foremost. But, but also, once we've applied these callouts, it's a very simple and straightforward task to select these objects and we can see that, that cross-referencing there. So as I pick up the balloons, you can see it picks up the object in the 3D display, but also inside the SBOM. And then we're going to jump in and, uh, and edit some of the properties in here. So we can change it from you know, numbered to lettered. We can change the font size. We can change whether it's uh, inside a shape, such as a circle or a square. And I'm just going to make a few edits to these to show that we can, we can do various things such as add halos or the line style and also change the, uh, the point at which the, the callout connects to my components as well. Again, these callouts can be customized and stored and saved and reused over and over again in different illustrations. Once the figure is complete, I can jump up to the, the figures drop down at the top here and very quickly duplicate that figure to maybe create a, a sequence of illustrations that build on the previous one. Or in this case, I'm actually just gonna use the, the, the information that I've already defined, such as things like color, um, maybe the orientation, and, and maybe the locations of it, and, and simply reuse those so I don't have to use them or set them up all over again. In this case, I'm going to turn off that phantom effect. And for this next figure, I'm going to be applying some, some different techniques. So we're going to employ a section view through here. And we're also going to change the, the shading style. So this will be a much more generic kind of default shaded view. And we're also going to apply some coloring on here. So illustrators have the capability to differ from the, the as engineered or as designed colors that assemblies have and create their own. So in this case, uh, a, a standard gray color that I've been asked to use. We jump in and start creating the section view here. The first thing really to notice with section views is the speed at which they're applied. So we're using uh, obviously engineering data. This could be heavy CAD data, but because we're only interested really in how it looks rather than how it behaves, it's not a parametric model in here at all. Um, the, the visualization capabilities that we have inside Creo Illustrate mean that we can 
section these parts, very complicated assemblies, extraordinarily quickly. You can see here we've applied a quarter cut section and at the moment our section is, is cutting through every single component which is something we're about to change. Now these section planes can also be edited and changed so if it's in the wrong orientation at the moment we can simply uh, modify that and make sure that we've got both section planes cutting in the correct direction. And then we can start to address whether we're intersecting with every single component in our assembly or using those, uh, those S-bomb assemblies that I've created, simply cut through just the interior and that top shell. And now what we have is uh, just an extra part here. Let's get rid of the base. We have this lovely cutaway section, which is giving us a great view of the parts that we're actually concerned about and, and want to create the illustration of, which are these, these gears and these cogs uh, that come from the motor. Now another technique that I'm going to show you here is first of all to change the line style um, and this is with a particular view to creating a detail view. So we've got these inserts that we can create that we can drag away from these main gear cog assemblies here and you can see we get this, this magnified view of what we're looking at here. And this creates a snapshot of its current orientation um, and the magnification on there as well but it also remembers the uh, graphical um, option that we've applied. So we've got the line art illustration inside the call out whereas with the rest of the um, uh, the illustration we've gone back to a shaded view and I can then change this orientation around so it best describes what it is I'm looking for and in addition to that you can see how the the detail view updates automatically with the view that I've got for the rest of the illustration so I can avoid those interferences with those cogs. At this point I'm going to add in a little call out note on here as well and just make sure that people are aware that they should be checking for um, alignment or, or clashing on here and again with all the call outs we have capabilities to customize how they're viewed so we can get rid of the rectangle or the shape we can put it into an ob round we can change the uh, uh, the thickness and the size of the font and also change things like the color and the, and the background fill in addition to this I'm going to apply some symbols and we've got we've got a couple of things in here called symbols or stamps so symbols could be 2d or 3d parts that you want to bring in so things like tools you know, screwdrivers hammers whatever it happens to be that need to be used with this particular illustration that don't come with the CAD assembly or it could be 2d information such as a warning symbol or a logo and we can apply those to our designs once that's been applied, you can see how quickly we can jump between the first figure and the second figure, and then we can continue to making the, uh, these figures, um, duplicating and reusing and building on the figure that we made before. For figure three, I've duplicated the original figure that I had before. We can see the, the S-bomb is still intact at the top there. And what I'm going to create for figure three is something more aligned to a, a kind of a web-based parts catalog, um, quite a generic exploded view of all the components, um, and then add callouts to them as well. So as we've seen before, very intuitive method of, of grabbing these components and simply separating them away, creating my exploded view using that six-axis controller. And, and while I'm doing this, because you've seen me do this a couple of times now, I'm actually going to skip forward uh, with a little bit of time lapse um, editing on this video um, and just take you a little bit forward into into the product because what I intend to do to show you how I created the finished result is actually employ uh, another feature of Creo Illustrate which is its ability to create animations. We have a tool at the top, you can see that uh, tab at the top of the screen there for animation and it will record every movement that you make, every translation that you apply to each one of these components as well as capturing things like camera location and position. And once you employ all this together, you can create some pretty stunning effects. And again, these can be used maybe for a, a service guide or a video to show how things were, were put together or disassembled. So the last few steps that I'm putting on here is obviously adding those callouts, which is something that you've already seen me do. So in order to kind of shortcut this to the finished result, I'll show you that, that video now. So as this plays through, you can see the, the camera changing position. You can start to see those translations being applied as the camera moves from, from location to location. You see the color change occur as well. Now, in addition to the animation tools that we have, we also have something called a sequence uh, builder, which enables you to animate um, a, a sequence of events. So as I mentioned before, a, a disassembly or an assembly of components or a procedure, but also couple that with instructions and, and phase it through steps. I have actually included a sequence video or an example of a sequence, which is at the end of this presentation while I'm doing the summary. So do look out for that. 
But what we can see here is a, a highly detailed um, view, exploded view of these parts that could be used for, for a, a web-based parts catalog. So that could be published as a video or as an interactive 3D file that you could embed into a website or as just a straight 2D image. And that's what we're going to focus on now. So if we take a quick look at these figures, you can see I've added a few more uh, while we've been away, uh, while the time lapse was, was carrying on there. And I'm going to focus in on this first illustration that I did, figure one. And I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to save this as a 2D image file. And we've got many different file formats to choose from, so PNG or JPEG. And we can change things on here like the resolution. But more importantly, we can include things called hotspots. And these can be used in interactive uh, documents or websites so that when a callout is clicked on or a part is clicked on, it can activate an action. It can, it can take you to another area of the website or another part of the document. But those hotspots are very important. Another th method that I can use to export this as is directly to PTC's ISO draw. So once this is exported to ISO draw, it does a couple of things in here. So you can see a lot of these options. The first thing is we can include thick and thin lines. We can also make sure that it exports as Bezier curves, which are high quality curves to be used in ISO draw. And we can also include a 2D graphical, uh, 2D graphical image along with the line art illustration. And this is quite important because to do these two things separately does take a lot of time and you have to try and marry them up and put them together. But you can see when we open up this file inside IsoDraw that we have the, 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 the JPEG image underneath the line art illustration as well. So if I just grab this and move this to the side, it kind of better shows it off for you here. So as we zoom in on these components, you can see we have the image below and then we have these high quality line art illustrations above. Excellent. So let's perhaps jump back to a different figure. Let's go back to that uh, parts catalog figure that we had before. And let's see how that responds as well. So I'm going to pick this up. and I'm going to publish this as the IsoDraw file. You can see there is no line art on here at the moment in the actual figure that I've created, but during the export options, I can set that to happen, which means that people receiving this, this parts catalog view of these components have the benefit of the line art illustration along with the, uh, the, the, the raster image underneath, exactly in line with each other and exported at the same time. There we go. Okay, let's jump back into Creo Illustrate and I'll take you through a final summary of the product. Creo Illustrate offers a dedicated environment with the tools required to create rich 2D and 3D technical illustrations. These can be used to communicate complex products and procedures clearly and graphically to downstream consumers of service and technical information. This enables technical illustrators, authors, and service planners to repurpose design and engineering data from any 3D CAD format to use in service information, training materials, illustrated parts catalogs, and even interactive sales collateral. Creo Illustrate allows the illustrator to interact directly with the design data and its BOM structure, enabling you to repurpose it from the engineering design into a service design BOM or any BOM that's required. This interaction is associative and stays intact throughout the entire illustration's life cycle. So should design change occur inside engineering, this will automatically propagate through to your illustrations. That concludes this short presentation on Creo Illustrate. Should you have any further questions or require more information, please don't hesitate to contact us at Root Solutions on www.root-solutions.co.uk. Thank you for watching.